Investigating Spatial Illusions in Virtual Reality Environments The purpose of virtual reality is making virtual experiences more like real experiences. In our project, we used a system that tracked head movements in three dimensions and provided visual feedback through a head-mounted display. A problem with virtual reality systems is that the trackable area is limited, which means the virtual world is limited as well. In our case, we only had a tracking area of approximately 2.5 by 2.5 meters, which means you can't walk very far before the system doesn't know where you are. So how can you make a system that will make it possible to explore a virtual world that is bigger than just 2.5 by 2.5 meters? Of course you could use a joystick or some other controller, but to make it more like reality, we need the users to be able to physically walk around while exploring the virtual world. There are several techniques that can be used to make the walkable area larger in the virtual world than it is in the physical world. To preserve the realism, these techniques should stay unnoticeable to the user. For instance, a user can be tricked into walking in circles in the physical world while it seems as if he's walking in a straight path in the virtual world. The user could then be walking down an endless path in the virtual world. The problem is that this requires a tracking area of around 45 by 45 meters for the manipulation to stay unnoticed. We found two techniques that seemed like they could work in our 2.5 by 2.5 meter area. The first is called translation gain, and it simply moves you further in the virtual world than you move in the physical world. Gaining the movement with 1.2 means that if you walk 10 meters in the physical world, you have walked 12 meters in the virtual world. With a translation gain of 1.2, our tracking area would go from 2.5 by 2.5 meters to 3 by 3 meters. The second technique we added is called self-overlapping architecture, and it uses a part of the tracking area twice. In the virtual world, two adjacent rooms will be connected by a hallway that will only allow the user to see one room at a time. The technique can be described as making the building bigger on the inside than on the outside, as the two adjacent rooms are too big to physically fit within the width of the building. In our setup, a building width of 2.5 meters would allow overlapping rooms to be 1.67 meters wide, or 3.33 meters in total. Combining the self-overlapping architecture with the translation gain technique would allow us to create a virtual environment that was 3 by 4 meters large, which is 192% the size of the physical tracking area. The test we needed to conduct was to see if the two techniques really were unnoticeable to the users. We created four scenarios to test the effect of the two variables. A total of 33 people participated in the test, with four being unable to complete the test because they felt nauseous. Measuring whether a person notices our techniques is difficult and introduces some uncertainty to the results of our test. However, we're quite certain that only one test participant noticed that the two rooms were overlapping. He compared the distance to the end of the hallway with the width of a room and said, that can't be right, or maybe it's just me. The translation gain was a little more difficult to conclude on, since many mentioned that they felt that their movement was unnatural and that they were dizzy. The problem is that dizziness might be a side effect of our implementation of the translation gain, or a side effect of the delay in our tracking system. We simply don't know. Around seven test participants noticed the translation gain directly, and around six participants experienced feeling that their movement was unnatural and that they were dizzy. In this situation, the translation gain did not work as intended. Too many test participants felt uncomfortable dizzy or that their movement was unnatural or unresponsive. To alleviate this, the delay in the system needs to be reduced so the visual feedback is more responsive to the movement of the user. 
Also, the implementation of the translation gain technique can be improved to reduce the feeling of dizziness. Too many test participants directly notice the translation gain by saying things like, I'm moving faster than I should, or my steps seem to be longer than in the real world. To alleviate this, we believe that the translation gain should be lower than 1.2, thus reducing the noticeability of the manipulation. The problem was that the sources we used tested in situations where the closest virtual object was 10 meters away while our objects were very close to the test participant most of the time. This makes it easier to see how fast you're moving. Naturally, you could move the objects further away rather than reducing the translation gain, but we don't think that is a very useful solution. To sum up, self-overlapping architecture seems to be a very strong manipulation that works in our tracking area while translation gain needs to be investigated further in order to safely conclude to which extent it can be used in our environment.